Welcome um, everybody back to the Siegel Talks here um, at the Martin e. Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in, in New York City at the City University in Manhattan. And um, it's another um, week uh, starting in confinement in lockdown. And uh, we had a Memorial Day weekend behind us and it will be uh, one to remember, not for the reasons, the good reasons why we should remember the engagements of you know, life and deaths and wars. But uh, this is a, a one that also I think in the history of the American uh, uh, of the Americas will be will be a significant one, and um, and in New York we are still you know um, in lockdown. Uh, even so, people we do go out and uh, uh, shopping or through the parks, but it is still a dangerous situation with uh, unknown um, unknown uh, features. We have over one hundred thousand deaths, uh, and the reports uh, from the hospitals are that less people are do coming in, but also our healthcare workers and everybody says it's a sign of exhaustion. It's an exhaustion in, in families and partners, and also the people who don't live as everybody might think, you know, with their friends, families, uh, spouses. So it's a difficult time. It's a trying time. Yesterday, Chris Fredong from Belgium uh, talked about it and he uh, reminded us that uh, all of it is about waiting and uh, perhaps doing less, but perhaps engaging more and reading and, uh, and thinking that so much of theater's work from Beckett or literature and Kafka is about waiting and how to deal with it. How much he misses theater, how sad it will be when people will be in masks, uh, sitting far away from each other. Um, because he said the uh, experience of, uh, <clears throat> of solitude or loneliness, which you might represent it on stage, but you do it in a group, you sit together, and this is not there and he misses the play to go outside and all what theater is about. Um, as James Simpson wrote um, in, in his book of a permanent revolution, you know, he said art and literature has always been on the side of, uh, uh, of uh, progress. Uh, it has been a uh, side of progressive histories and the histories of freedom. Um, freedoms are, are threatened around the world. Uh, also, our personal freedoms have been uh, curtailed by that social choreography we are now in. So um, it is a time we think at the Seagull Tour, as we always do in our programs, to listen to the voices of the artists who are on the right side of history, the right side of social progress, and how do they experience this moment? They are closer to our present, they anticipate the future, and um, and we have heard voices from around the world, from Egypt and Lebanon and Shanghai and uh, South Africa, from <clears throat> Germany, Belgium, Italy, um, uh, Ukraine, all around the world for now nine weeks. And we are coming uh, now also to a great country that has a great, great theater tradition. One of the major ones uh, from Spain um, going back for, for, for centuries and uh, a long one and, uh, and it has made major major contributions uh, to what we understand as theater and performance is all about. And um, we are having with us Aina Tour from Sala Beckett in Barcelona, a very significant, important, influential theater in uh, the Catalan region in Barcelona, but also for Spain itself. She's also part of this Centro Dramatico and of course uh, from Madrid and in Spain. Uh, she um, has studied uh, pharmacology and uh, agriculture, then she became an actor, and then she became a playwright, and then a director, and now she's also deeply engaged in Catalan literature. Uh, it's a, a true honor um, to, to have you with us, and, um, and our friends also from uh, the Instituto Roman Lu, like Yadranka, when we asked them, you know, we need someone from Spain, and uh, we have many contacts to our publishing. We have published many books with uh, plays from Spain and social. The Barcelona plays and Benet Ijonet, a playwright who actually died with the coronavirus. We published his book, Marion Peter Holt, was the translator. He wrote a beautiful mail about him. And uh, so um, <clears throat> now we are going to hear a bit uh, um, from, from um, that region. So, you know, where are you? What time is it? <laughs> and what's all behind you? What's that on the wall? <laughs> Good afternoon, Frank. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you for the invitation and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am so glad for being here this afternoon, 
sharing some thoughts and experience about this strange and terrible situation we are all living. I'm at home uh, in Barcelona. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 6 uh, p.m. and this uh, I decide to just to uh, paint my walls with the days that I've been confined. And mm -hmm. I started the 14th of March, March 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished a few weeks ago because we start in, uh, to another new uh, phase of the confinement when we start to be allowed to go uh, outside. And it's phase one, it ends. And yesterday you start the phase one. <laughs> For being mm -hmm. a citizen, you have to do a master of what you can do or not, or what you are allowed to do or, or not. Um, I, I want to tell you that it's a, a, a pleasure also and an honor being here as an artist as an a cultural agent and I will try to do my best with my English. <laughs> as, Your English uh, is perfect, really great. <laughs> as you can Thank hear is is not my native language and sometimes I get a bit lost and please let me know it if you don't understand something and we'll mm -hmm. try to uh, I will clarify for you the best I can Thank and you. if I get very very lost uh, we can change the subject and talk about love. I had an American boyfriend and I have the, I have a master talking about love. So just kidding, but... No, so. that's important. <laughs> uh, we all lost and we also need to talk about love. That's, that's yeah, important. I think and, um, just in case. Yeah, yeah, no, you we, we are there. But listen, um, so how is the situation now? Tell us, you can go out on the street. Are there masks? Do you have to write permissions? Like in France, you have to print something out. Um, is it a curfew in the night or weekends? Um, what's yeah. actually going on in Barcelona? Yeah, I, I'm going to explain you a bit the situation from the beginning, you know, because that it's not that crazy that from the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the situation is crazy in every part of the world. Uh, we have been under confinement fin since the 14th of May. And I couldn't believe it. That was crazy. From one day to the other, the government announced that we were not able to be in the street. We had, we had to be at home. And we just were allowed to go to the supermarket, pharmacy, tobacco shop, and the bank. <laughs> and we spent 49 days without being allowed to go for a walk. Now, this all seems like a memory from the past, but was difficult to face. I walk in circles on my rooftop, seven kilometers per day, 10,000 You really steps. do? Every yes, day? Yes, every day. Seven every kilometers. Day. How many yes. circles? <laughs> A lot, because every kilometer was 50 circles, <laughs> imagine. 50, no, 200 circles. It was crazy. But I, I felt as a hamster and as a prisoner sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the situation outside was so hard and I held my responsibilities as a citizen. There were a lot of people dying. Hospitals were overcrowded without respirators for everyone. Sanitary staff without safety protections. A lot of people dying alone without their relatives at their side. And families were not allowed to go to their lover once the funerals. Imagine how that can affect their emotions and feelings forever. No, in, in Madrid they didn't have enough, enough morgue space for all the corpses, so they had to store them in a nice ring. But now it seems the situation is more so under the control. The coffins was where they were on the ice of the Barcelona ice hockey team. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy and so sad. And we look at that like, what what's going on? What's happening? We were not ready for that, but. Now it seems that the situation is more under control and for the last weeks we are allowed to go for a walk and practice some individual sports. And since yesterday, bars and shops are open and they say we can meet friends, just up to 10 people can gather. But it's, it is a, a step after two months and a half without being able to see anyone apart from your flatmates. I'm living alone. Um. <laughs> Anyways. Society is under shock and nobody expects this and no one was ready or trained for this. It just happened. So bars are open, but only 10 people can be in a bar? No, you, you are just able to meet 10 people uh, at home or in a bar or wherever. And bars uh, have to, uh, they, I don't know how many people can be in the bar, depends on the dimensions of the bar. 
but you have to have the social distance in between the other group or the other people. Oh, so there can be different groups of 10 people. Do you wear masks? Do you have to wear masks? Yes. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if we, they told us that it's better we wear masks, but it's, I don't know if we have to do it by law yet. They say that from one of these days it's going to be uh, obligatorio. I don't know how to say yeah, it. Obligat <laughs> Sorry. Obligatory. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I have That's a beautiful quite... ones. I have a handmade ones that I bought. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. We have to show them to us maybe <laughs> they um, are. at oh, some dear. point. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so um, what is the situation then um, for uh, for theaters? Of course, I guess everything was closed, but now in that different phase, what's going on in theater? Theaters they, depends on the theater. Uh, I there are uh, from this Monday we are allowed to open the theaters. And, really? But yeah but with a lot of restrictions and it's oh, not that us. easy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I haven't studied all the law because uh, the, the part of the production uh, team of Salabeket is doing that. But uh, you have, uh, we have to wear masks, sometimes glasses for rehearsals, gloves, uh, you have to mm, be sure that everyone is uh, having the social distance or the safety distance. It's not a social distance. It's a safety or sanitary distance. And uh, the occupation has to be under 30 persons uh, in every venue for the time being. But everything is changing every day. They are, uh, you have to be all the time reading a lot of documents for from the government and just in trying to manage that. But from today, we can we are able to open the theaters, but it's not that easy because you have to clean the all the building every day, a lot of times, uh, do a sanitary uh, preparation for everything, mm, just put uh, I don't know signs everywhere uh, explaining people what they have to do. Hmm. So let's say you have a 300 seat house, a hundred people can come in 30% more. No, less, it's not 30% because it's, they say 30%, but uh, nowadays, today uh, has to be, uh, has to be uh, not more than 30 persons. And uh, in the phase, no, phase two, it's gonna be 50 persons. Wow, I mean, it's the first time we hear on the Siegel Talk that theaters are uh, reopening and um, even 30% seems high with the distance between the rows and the mask. Uh, so actually, you, so let's say today in Barcelona, there are actors with plastic gloves, mask and, no. and, plas and goggles and plastic and rehearsing? No. No, not today because no one is doing that. No, no one. They say that we can do it and before, uh, from yesterday you are allowed to do it, but you need to have a plan with the laws uh, and uh, everything and they need to, to validate your plan and then you can open. And it's not that easy because there, is, there are a lot of uh, administrative uh, um, documents to do and a lot of people didn't want to, to rehearsal in these conditions. Yeah. Do, so and what did, the, uh, hmm, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Please do. What? No, that uh, most of the theaters decide not to open because it's uh, if you just uh, have uh, you are allowed to have thirty persons in your theater. Um, this is. Uh, from where you get the money, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, it's not. It's not working at all, and we are we are gonna try to do the first show in July. July, okay. Yeah. What's gonna be the first show? The one that was uh, on when the confinement starts. It's called La Morta by Mark Rewet, and it's an adaptation of a contemporary playwright Mark Rewet, 
of a play from he by his uh, grand grandpa. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're continuing. What have theater artists been doing in Barcelona in that time of confinement or at the moment? How did they react? Uh, from my work in Salabeket as a part of the artistic team, uh, I'm overseeing programming in there. I talk with a lot of artists because my, my job, it's part of my job is uh, design the calendar, the programming calendar. And I need to talk with a lot, a lot, a lot of artists. And that was a bit sad, a bit crazy because everyone was, what's going on? I know what is going to happen. And, and I was telling them all the time, I don't know. We, we need to learn to manage uh, uncertainty. It's, we don't know, it not depends on us. And people were writing a lot. Uh, I uh, see some rehearsals, uh, Zoom rehearsals. People were, some others were very depressed saying, I can write, I cannot create, I can do, uh, I'm not able to do anything. I don't know what is going to go on. And uh, depends on the artist, on the, or on the way they, uh, they afford that. The thing is that um, I feel that I'm a privilege because uh, my economic situation is good. But most of the artists, uh, because I'm working at Sala Beckett and also I'm working in Centro Dramatico Nacional and my, my economy didn't depend just on my artwork. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there are a lot of artists that just, they have just intermittent uh, works and if they are not working, if they are not working in a show, they are not getting paid. And this is very difficult to face for them. And uh, now the government, because of the pressure of the theater wall, they decide to do some some things, some measures to and and give uh, some grants for for artists. But at the moment, it's just a short short term uh, measure. Mm -hmm. We need to see what's going on, but it's not easy. And people doesn't know people is disoriented. Mm -hmm. Barcelona is such a town of theater. We publish many plays and the Barcelona plays, Benetti Jeanette and, and many, many others. Um, is this changing theater, what people think about what theater and performance is? Do you feel there will be a before and after in the Barcelona theater scene? I think for sure it's gonna be, but I don't know how, because we are just landing in this situation. No, I feel that uh, a lot of queries are, are going to fit our new queries are going to fit our artwork because uh, the situation, the social situation is very difficult. Uh, we don't know if um, how this is going to affect the economy of the country and how all what happened, a, a part of money, a part of our work, what happened with the society, people dying, no? And, and people dying and hospitals overcrowded and uh, all that things are gonna change the way that we create art. But I don't know how yet, it's too soon. Mm -hmm. Do you feel your government responded well to, to the crisis? Yes, somehow yes. Of course, there are things that they could do better, but it's very difficult. How do you can imagine that the virus is going to come and you have to just decrease the, the state of uh, alarm, sanitary alarm? They they try to to do. They are doing good things, but they will need to do more because. Um, you know, the, the, for me, the crisis amplifies the lacks of the system, you no? Know? And everything now we are seeing the, the lacks like this, you no? Know? That there is a lot of people uh, in a vulnerable economic situation uh, and that is gonna have consequences. And now is the time to decide the government or the public administrations need to decide what they, which the both, they have two scenarios, no uh, more, but just to sim simplify, 
they can just choose one and say, okay, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to do what I was planning to do before the crisis, or I'm gonna try to help, or I'm gonna try to change a bit the society and the way that the state is taking care of people that it's uh, undercover. Mm -hmm. So do you, if theater is of interest, it's always also because it's a model. It's a model for the real, for the symbolic and for the imaginary. So if things are changing, also they are represented often earlier in theater and performance. What, do, will you change things, how you present work at Sala Beckett? Will, will that have an impact, this crisis? Yeah, uh, as I told you, I, uh, for sure something is going to happen, no? For sure something is going to change because theater or art, it's a dialogue with society and with humanity. And if you are an artist, you are in constant dialogue with that. And now mm, we need as an artist to, to create the mm, imaginary world different. And I don't know what is gonna happen in Sala Beckett yet. We are, I think we are going, going to start to work uh, in there in 15 days or in around 15 days. And we have a lot of uh, shows that we need to program next season because we have the commitment with the artists and the ones that we couldn't show uh, the last months. But I think we need time to, to see what's the reaction of the playwrights and what they write down. We, we had uh, an, an open call uh, for our, one of our main programs. It's the Artist in Residence. And we have every I, uh, playwright in residence. We have every year one playwright that we pay him to write down a play and we produce that play. And also uh, that person is involved in uh, our artistic committees, you no? Know? And we are doing activities with that uh, playwright and everything. And we receive 95 projects. And most of them write it from write it from write it write it down from the confinement. And I, I, I was uh, I don't have a theory yet, but I see you know what people were people is worried about why we work, how we work, how we get relate with the family, how we get relate with our relatives, um, how the society is gonna be after that, and. I read 90 projects, 95, and I, I see that, yes, something that the, the topics are changing a bit, you know? People are asking what the hell is gonna go on, you know? Mm. And we need time, we need to give time to the writers to land in this situation, just to analyze it and then create. Mm. Also in, in, Ju in July, we are going to do our, um, International Summer School. We did it every for the last 14 or 15 years. And we need to change some things because uh, it's an international <laughs> school. And yeah. obviously the international teachers and outdoor uh, playwrights are not gonna be able to come. And, but we are gonna do some online um, courses uh, or workshops and other ones on site and most of them are going to be related with the situation and we are going to do some talks with uh, cultural agents, sanitary uh, staff also and we are going to try to revise a bit the, the, the literature from other uh, pandemics, you know, just to, mm -hmm. to evaluate a bit the situation. And we are going to try to, to do some activities in the public space mm -hmm. because, because it's where, uh, because I think it's time you know, to, to try to, 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 to get into or to step into the public space, not for everything, it has to be a mix, the programming, yeah. in, but you feel more safe in there. What's know? the public space in Barcelona? What do you mean by public space? streets or um, squares, 
but uh, we are working with the um, uh, mayor house to go to a park beside Salabeket, mm -hmm. a beautiful one, and to do a course in there. A workshop and the talks, some stay reading also, but we are working on all the administrative uh, staff to get the permissions. Mm -hmm. Let's I know see. Salah Sala Beckett is really dedicated to playwriting and uh, to authors. Um, are there digital initiatives that things might not happen in Salah Beckett, not in the parks? I don't know if you plan things for the parks, also performances or the public spaces, but will there also be things online? Are you preparing to do things online? Yeah, no, the, the park activity is just going to be a part because we are going to do uh, just a part of the activities because we are going to do activities just in the workshops. Salabeket. You will yeah, do just yes. workshops in the parks, but no... You're yeah, some stage out. readings, yeah, but not shows at the moment. Uh, just uh, workshops, some talks, and some stage readings or park readings then. And we had do some activities in, in the, our venues and in our classes and everything. And uh, we are going to do some online activities. We are doing uh, activities online right now, some courses, workshops, and some of them were on uh, in the beginning of the confinement. And uh, the others we create, uh, uh, we are working on and designing the news, the, the uh, international summer school um, workshops and uh, we are going to have Javier Dote from our Argentina, also Tim Crouch from England and we are working on that now. Mm -hmm. um, so do you show work from Sala Becker? They say it's recordings of shows or do you have actors read monologues, poetry? This is something you online and what do you think of online offerings? by theaters at the moment? I haven't seen any screen theater because um, <laughs> I didn't feel in the mood to, because uh, as a programmer, I, I used to go to the theater three or five times per week, 11 months a year. And I, 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 I didn't see, I, I haven't seen it. But I think there are a lot of good uh, offers and uh, good shows and everything. And people is enjoying a lot seeing th a screen theater and everything. But I, I haven't done it. In Salabeket, uh, we haven't shown the, the recordings of our shows, but we, we just published uh, again some talks that we, we organize our programming with uh, uh, activities about um, th um, debate and thought and we just um, did that and we are organizing some talks too in between playwrights now but we we need to stop the activity in the beginning because we are we 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 prefer to stop and then we are starting now with the online proposals online proposals so in a way you wait till that is over that you can open again I mean, the Public Theater in New York commissioned, or it was the idea of a writer that did a Zoom show. I mean, uh, Nelson um, created based on characters that often come in his work. So they created an online work that existed only on, on Zoom, but you feel uh, you are trying to get back to, 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 to being able to show the work of the writers in a, in a, in a way that's respectful. Yeah, I think that it's it's good to to find ways or use the all the online uh, tools to 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 show theater, no. But it's thinking theater to be done into this uh, virtual world. But it's not the same that just recording a theater that you were supposed to do with the audience in a venue and just put that. Uh, I don't. I'm not interested interested in that but i think that for a lot of months we are going to adapt ourselves to these new tools and we are going to do we are going to go we are going to do or design some stuff like that and it works they told me i i just look at this or look at that no it's good and it works because it's just, they are things that are are uh planned to be done with the, those tools but not in Salabeket, but as a cultural agent and as an artist, I think that we need to, to go to the streets and the squares and the 
public space. I have a, I had a project with Andres Lima, who's a, a, a well-known director here in Spain. He's my friend, and I called him and said, uh, Andres, I got all of this in my mind. What do you think? And we start to create the project. Now it's uh, we are asking to the public administration, local ones, to pay uh, uh, the to pay artists to to create in the street, because I think that theater is the 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 most beautiful thing, or the thing I miss more is the encounter, the mm -hmm. real one. And yes, you can be watching a a show in Zoom and knowing that there are more people with you looking at that, but it's not the same. It's this community uh, feeling, you know, that uh, we need to, to recover it because people is going to be scared to come back to, to theater or to, if they told you that you have to go to the supermarket with a mask and clean your hands and everything, then we, we need to find ways to make people or the audience or society to feel confident with the uh, theater or the scenic arts. Yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. Many um, uh, artists also we talk to uh, from around the world say perhaps it is a moment uh, to also reflect uh, on the structure, on the system of theater and also to leave the space, uh, perhaps use it for the moment in a different way. It could be an exhibition or theater artists living in the theater and creating, but perhaps in streets or public spheres, there will be an engagement. My question for you as, a, as the person, as Aina, the person who studied uh, pharmacology and also agriculture, were you prepared for this uh, uh, um, confinement? How did you experience it? What, what is going through your mind? Did you even have time to think or did you work so much? <laughs> I, I'm going to explain it to you. I work a lot, but uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I've been doing all the Salabeket's work and, and I've been I've been doing also I read a lot because uh, I, I read things from Salabeket, the projects and the plays that are they are uh, that arrive there, and also the ones that arrive to Centro Dramatico Nacional. But I, and I've been studying too and reading a lot for my studies, but I have time to, to, for myself and to create. And I wasn't ready to afford this situation in the beginning, what's was so hard. But now I feel good. I spent 70 days alone. <laughs> 70 <laughs> days alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at home. And it's not that bad. Sometimes I, I get nervous and I have some anxiety, and, but I, I just face at it and say, it's normal. You are at home, alone, working, creating, but alone, without the, the contact of, of the skin of the people you love, without kisses, without hugs. And, and this is sad, but it's how it is. And I feel good. I feel inspired. I write down two little pieces. Uh, one, it was for the prison, uh, a prison here in Barcelona. The teacher asked me to, to write down something for them, uh, for the prisoners that are doing theater in there. And I wrote about some, a conversation that I heard you know, while I was doing some roof watching from my sofa. And uh, I wrote about that conversation that I heard that was my neighbor with, uh, talking with her, his grandma and saying that he had uh, the, that whiskey was going to protect them from coronavirus, but he, he has a lot of theories. And I was like, what the fuck is he saying? Mm. Sorry. <laughs> what sure, yeah. he's saying? Whiskey? And he was saying, just grandma, please drink whiskey all the time, all day. And uh, I wrote on a scene uh, about that because we are a bit nervous all, you know, and we are seeing things like that. And I just wrote down a funny story. And from the Centro Dramatico Nacional, they asked me a short piece too for his, their, their web. And uh, it's gonna be in the uh, next week, I, I guess. And it's about the homeless that lives here in the square beside home uh, that I just passed by the other day at eight o'clock, the time for the plows. 
and one woman started to applaud and he was, what she's doing? Why is he applaud? Why, why he, she's clapping their hands? And I was just imagining a monologue of a person that homeless that doesn't understand anything. People is with masks. Everyone at eight o'clock is going to run or it's running and biking and uh, streets are empty. And I, I wrote down another funny piece about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. also, uh, this week it's better than the others, but I had to make a decision because I was in the point to, I was supposed to, to show my new play in Greek festival. I don't know if you uh, know that Greek festival, it's an yeah. international festival, summer festival here in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and uh, we were supposed to start rehearsals today. And uh, I just decided to to stop the 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 rehearsal. I just this I, I I made the decision to not uh, have to don't have to. Uh, sorry, I get lost now. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. No, that's good. I, I made uh, the decision to to stop the the premiere. We are going to have the show in. We are going to have the premiere in uh, in autumn, but not now because. I didn't want to put my team in that situation. I didn't want them to rehearse to, to the producers to do the sanitary plan for the rehearsals. And uh, I think it's a bit insane, a rehearsal mm -hmm. with gloves, masks, glasses, safety protocols, and without hugging each other. And I just made this decision and says Casa de Sus, the director of the festival, understood that very good. And we are going to to do a reading, but we are going to do a part of the creation of the process in July. And at the end of this uh, creation week, we are going to do a stage reading, but with elements, with the music yeah, and design and, and with a, a stage design also. And we are going to do that on site and also on a streaming. Mm -hmm. And hmm. so today you had to make up your mind if your play would happen uh, under those, um, however, Corona, COVID-19, sanitary confinement circumstances or not. Other colleagues of yours, will they, will the play be done? Will they, do you the know? The play will be, sorry? No, uh, for, for the Greek festival, other plays, do you think plays will be shown? So yeah. Rehearsals will start next week? So, some ones are gonna, are gonna do it uh, and, and are gonna have the premiere in the Greek festival. Some of them were already done or and some of them are gonna rehearsal in other circumstances uh, because there is people that is not in Barcelona rehearsing and uh, in other communities, uh, the situation with coronavirus wasn't like in Barcelona and they are in the phase one for the last week. They were able just to meet people more than 10 persons and depends uh, the the festival they announced last week that is going to be on and we are there are going to be different activities not all the shows that were supposed to have the premiere in there are, are going to be able to mm. to do it right yeah so maybe it's all going to be a dream for commercial producers no more than 10 people involved including <laughs> yeah, actor, imagine. director it's so going to be much cheaper and, and easier uh, to do but uh, <laughs> I hope in New York often, you know, people look at me as more than four people. Yeah. No, forget it. I'm not no. Um, yeah. But listen, um, um, if I may ask you, you know, you, you, you talked about love. Um, and we, 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 but Chris Verdong yesterday said we are faced with existential questions now. If we don't think about it now, whenever. And so what, what are your thoughts? Since you mentioned it, what, what are you thinking about? Uh, I'm... I'm feel, I feel I feel strong to face this crazy situation. I guess because all my needs are covered, and I, I have got all I need. Uh, beloved people around me, taking care despite of distance, our work to do. I'm passionate about my work, and I'm, my studies are going well. So I just need to be relaxed, and and I'm thinking a lot of that. Just, I know you have to be relaxed as much as you can to afford that what is going to come. 
to manage all the, the uncertainty. And sometimes I feel disoriented, but I accept it. Uh, and also, um, <laughs> I'm thinking when I'm going to be able to do to go to the hairdresser. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. just kidding, a little bit, but oh, sure. it's yeah. but it's something it's it's something a bit stupid. But it's like wow, what, what when life is going to be normal and how what normal is going to mean? And I'm I'm very 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 worried about about how our governments are going to treat us as citizens and how they are going to do to support all this, all, the whole society, but the, the artist, you know, especially for me right now, because we are talking about art. And I think art is something that has to be protected and creators has to be protected because we are not just an entertainment. We are something that helps the society to release the fears, the, the traumas, and they, the art helps us to, in, to question ourselves about life, about situations, and we, with the representation, we see human behavior and human conflicts in there, and now we can step or move on from our mental or our worries, you know? And I'm worried about that, how, because I, I don't want to imagine a world, a world without art or without artists or artists, there's homeless artists, you know? I think that the public administrations, the states, the governments need to do something with all the people and also with to protect art as a as persons that or as people who helps to to give medicine for our souls and our spirit art is medicine during confinement everyone is listening to music watching movies reading more than ever so who is creating that? Why? The art is a window to paradise or to hell, but a window to travel. And we need that window. Mm -hmm. And you're afraid those windows could be closed or that it's not enough done by the politicians or by government by, or by society. Yes, sure. I'm afraid of that. I don't want to be, and I think it's not time just to complain. We need to take actions and do things and be strong and try to help that, that and, or, or, or pressure the administrations just to ask them to, to don't let art just go. But it depends on the crisis, the economic crisis that is going to come and it can happen. It's easy. It's not going to be the first time that that happens. And artists are going to create for sure because it's something that we don't do for business. We do for it's a, just something. It's an impulse, something that we need to do. But you, if you don't have support or your economic situation is not good and you have to work in other things, then you cannot create that much you know and I'm, I'm scared of that and I think things are uh, some things are happening and here in Spain politicians are aware of that they are trying to work on that they just start to open uh, to 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 public open calls for grants for artists and everything but this is a short-term action Mm -hmm. And I want to think in a long term. And I'm worried about that, the long term. You know? It's like when you are going to be able to um, open your theater with 50 persons, it's okay. You don't need any grants or you don't need any support. No, because we need the audience, not just for economic reasons, also for artistic reasons. We need this, encounter, this encounter, you know. And I, I'm worried 
because we, everyone is saying, no, it's going to be like this or like that, but nobody knows. Every day things are changing and we need to be there aware and try to just manage that uncertainty and protect the artist all the time. Mm. It's patrimony. It's a, it's a word, patrimony, patrimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Patrimony of art, yeah. Yeah. It's to it's protect, patrimony. shelter, support. Yeah. 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 So how do you protect yourself? What do you do to in the day? Um you say you sit down. Uh, tell us a little bit how does your day look like in, in of a in I Barcelona. Woke up always, How does? <laughs> mm -hmm. I woke up always very sleepy. I need one or two hours to be awake. <laughs> Around what coffee. time? About what time does it start? <laughs> Depends day? on the day. Uh, today I start at nine or mm -hmm. no at ten, but some days I start. Uh, I woke up at eight and another's at twelve. Depends. I decide not the, to don't use the alarm clock. Uh, just in case that I have a meeting or something, but I, I don't use the alarm clock. And just I drink a lot of coffee here in the balcony with the sun on my sunlight on my face, and I start to plan the day. And I work for Salabeke a bit, for uh, Centro Dramatico Nacional also. Sometimes uh, during the afternoon, I'm I'm doing my home or my university um, task. And I do some sport. I, I did martial arts for eight weeks or something like that, a friend of mine by Zoom. But uh, I need to stop it because I, I work a lot. And the, the last weeks I work 14 hours per day, more or less. And oh, that's a lot. It's too much. Too much, yeah. Yeah, but... You know, it's it's not the, the concentration, it's different sometimes and you need more time to get in. And now I'm starting to uh, to to be my normal rhythm <laughs> mm. again with my normal rhythm again. But yeah, I, I had a lot of work to do and I'm I'm planning. We are planning called the, the next season, the 2021 from September to July. And I'm. Uh, making phone calls and talking with artists and uh, and and the phone calls are more uh, long you know in this yeah, situation yeah yeah, yeah because uh, in another circumstances uh, you call someone just to give some dates or, or the, the period for the show and everything and and they you spend 15 minutes or 10 or sometimes more if there is something to to resolve or a conflict or whatever but now it's one hour talk sometimes, you know, everyone it's just, what are you doing? And we are, and explain the situation and it's more, everything gets more uh, slow. And sometimes when, as I finish work, I do some Zooms or a phone call with friends. And as I, when I close the computer, I had, I, took a beer, fresh one from the <laughs> fridge and I sit uh, here in the balcony watching the moon and mm -hmm. listen to some music and that's mm -hmm. When do you do your running? My running at eight sometimes. And uh, now from the last weeks, uh, I, a friend of mine gave me a bike and I got a, it's an old bike, but for me it's my new bike. And, and I'm going to La Barceloneta, it's the beach uh, here in Barcelona. And I, I bike there. It's one hour, just go and come back, or one hour and a half. And I feel so good and, it, and so, so, so free, you know, for the, just with the air of my, in my skin. And it's like, wow, who could, who could imagine that, you know, that I was like mm, over um, that, um, em, those emotions just biking. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it's like you you have been in prison or something like that you no know? yeah. it's not the same but yeah. it's the freedom you know, of movement mm -hmm. since since you engaged with agriculture or pharmacology with medicine healing and acting directing what what helped you what to give get answers to create meaning what was 
most useful for you? Um, that that uh, I don't know. Just to understand a little bit more how we work as a uh, human bodies but I create uh, my first publication the first play that they published me it was uh, about uh, evolution genetic evolution but I decided to just not to talk too much more about that it's just something that I've got in my mind and it's useful if you I don't know you feel you have some headaches you know what you have to take <laughs> and mm -hmm. if you have some plans uh, you can make them grow better, but <laughs> it's not that much in my artwork. No. Mm -hmm. And no, you... my... no, I, I was, if you want, I can explain you a little bit what is my play about, the one that I was supposed to have the premiere in Greek festival. Sure. It's a monologue and it's called uh, The Galaxy of Fireflies. And it's based on a personal experience that, uh, that happened to me when I was 21 years old in a Latin American country. I was kidnapped for many hours and they put me some guns on my head, but nothing happened to me. Or you were kidnapped? Uh, you were kidnapped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a lot of hours. And everything ended well. Nothing happened to me. Just guns on my head. And that's not that much after all. Me and while it, me and you, when you are in there, it's it's very hard, but nothing happened. Uh, but the play is about the consequence of this uh, that assault, uh, about the government apparatus that this situation activates, and how they reacted because four people from a rich country were hij hijacked by five people from a poor country, and that was terrible. Uh, and basically with the, the play, I'm talking about the privilege, about the moral and about the ethical precepts and how the perspective of being European uh, changed for me forever. Death and dying and killing, it's not the same if you have born in a rich country or in a poor country. And that's the world as it is. And I wish I was older when I had the perception of this, of that in my own skin, but we can choose everything and I wrote it down 20 years later. I need 20 years to write about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the play is gonna be, we are working in the, uh, in the edition or the, yeah, the edition of the play and it's gonna be a bilingual book in Spanish and in English. And I hope we are gonna have this during the, the, reading that we are going to do during the Greek festival. Mm -hmm. So it does deal with life and death, class, the country, rich countries, poor countries, a lot of what is also no, in the way, I'm not Corona say thing. It. No, 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 I'm I mean so for Corona. No, no, oh, no, yes. it deals with, with theme that come actually up, you know, in this, um, this um, Corona time and what do we have here. So what do you read? I know you study now literature at the university, but what do you read and what do you listen to in these days? What helps you? And um... Yeah, uh, I read a lot of plays, new ones, the ones I, I already told you, the ones that arrived me from, that arrived to Sala Beckett and, uh -huh. and to Centro Dramatico Nacional. But for and your studies, as, you say you are studying, yeah, right? And, uh, yeah, what do you read? For, what do you read? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> tell you right now. Uh, uh, and I, re I read uh, some philosophers because um, I'm doing a mention in philosophy in my degree. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a beginner. But I, I'm thinking a lot that we need to revisit the, the age of enlightenment uh, in terms of democratic value and in terms of being subjects, but also sovereigns as citizens, no, I, I read Rousseau a lot. And mm -hmm. I think there is something in there that we, we have to revisit a bit. And I also read Nietzsche, I love Nietzsche, uh, I, mm -hmm. I, his philosophy, not him, but <laughs> I guess we need to learn from him the, the will to kill the ruling power and become free spirits. I, it's what mm -hmm. I, I'm always revisiting him because of that. And I read Bolaño, the Chilean, I, I, it's a poet. Bolaño is a poet. And also Murakami, the Japanese writer. Murakami. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Molano, the novelist, uh, who uh, was the, See, it's the savage novelist, detective. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's poetry. But for, yeah, for me, it's a poet. It's not a novelist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's, true. It's, uh, Great books, yeah. yeah. And I'm listening a lot of music, but there is a song that I listen to it uh, the first month of confinement a few times a day. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and I used to dance it a lot here, just woo, jumping and dancing. And it's across the universe by the Beatles, because despite everything, nothing is going to change my world. Nothing's going to change my world, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's giving it an additional, an additional uh, a, a meaning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I cry some days dancing this song. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it was like everything keeps changing, but I, I need to just you know, be focusing myself and try to protect myself from all what's happening and try to find my courage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, these are um, for sure moments you would not have thought about a couple of months yeah. ago that you would be at home. <laughs> running no. seven kilometers on your roof, uh, that you would no. be dancing to the Beatles crying. No, no. I was thinking, wow, I'm going to be at Salabeket. I'm going to uh, travel to Madrid for the committee. I'm going to be rehearsing, uh, studying, going to Menorca. My parents are from Menorca, Little Island mm-hmm. in the Balearic. Yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. And uh, I miss my island a lot and my parents a lot too but i was thinking that my life was going to be de- that and boom just stay in your place and do everything from here it change life change mm. what do you think will be let's say it all goes well and phase one and two and three come but from that from those days of confinement what will you take what have you learned what have you experienced where you feel this is the most significant insight I had. Just to take life as it is, the things that you cannot change. I learned it before, but now it's more deep, more deep, deep. It's a deeper learn, learning. Because what you can do, I was, here and thinking I got everything I need I can go to the supermarket just have good food nice wine nice beers my friends are there in my phone not not beside me but life now is like this and if I use my energy to get angry depressed and complaining I'm not gonna transform anything or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna help to find the ways, or I'm gonna find my ways to get related with the new reality. I need all my energy. And I learned that, and I, I spend a lot of time just, just connect with yourself and see what you can do. This is the situation. What, are, what do you need in this situation? transform your needs in your objectives. Mm. I like your idea that you also say, you know, that it made you read Rousseau and the Enlightenment and that we perhaps all have to get back to think about uh, this participatory democracy we are in. Do you, what are your thoughts? What, what if you read his work, what, what comes to your mind? For if you say things have to change in Spain and you also worry that they won't change or get worse, so what do you think needs to be done? If we revisit the age of the enlightenment, uh, they were asking to, to the state to give people the basic needs, the, to solve the basic needs, to let them, well, I explain this in English, it's not easy right now, yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna try You're it. You're very good, your, your English is great. <laughs> No, the, the, the state need to give the citizens uh, education, a house, and sanitary staff, and uh, sanitary needs, and also food and everything, and help or, or work, not help, work to, 
to have citizens that can think and make decisions by themselves. And I'm going to try to to connect this with the coronavirus. No, um, I imagine two situations. Uh, no, a, a poor person living in a poor neighborhood here in Barcelona that. Uh, has no uh, the when the coronavirus starts or the confinement starts, that person has three children, no work, no support from the administrations, has to help his kids to to do the homeworks and everything, and also is receiving from the the uh, a friend of mine called now the the Spanish the, the all the government announced uh, propaganda mm -hmm. <laughs> from the government saying you have to be at home, you are going to die if you go outside and everything. Imagine how do you receive that if you don't have the tools to, to question that a bit. Mm -hmm. And another person that has everything solved and everything and can just uh, spend time looking for information and create their own um, thoughts perhaps is going to question something no and i think and and it's not going to say oh the government uh, government is saying that i i have to do it no question that too i i, I understand that we need to be close at home because uh, it was a sanitary emer emergency but they treat it, they treat us a, like a child you know it's like if you go to the street policemen are there you will need to uh, you are gonna they are gonna uh, put you you will need to pay a ticket if you go outside and I was thinking why I, I can walk in my rooftop and I cannot walk into the street just for 30 minutes today I don't care but with order and everyone respecting and it seems like we are just child and we are just um, subjects not sovereigns. Mm -hmm. And this is not easy. But perhaps there is something to think about that. Not not it, we are not gonna be we are not gonna apply all the what Rousseau was saying. I don't know what all or what he was saying. But why in the 18th century they were questioned that and now we are just saying yes. <clears throat> Sorry, we are just saying yes to everything, not questioning, not questioning our democracy, mm. which are the the tools for the citizens to decide the laws or what is uh, what they apply on us. You know, it's like no, the, the, this is the law. You have to do this. You have to do that. Perhaps no. Yeah. The responsibility you know, of every citizen and the, the major as a citizen. And I feel that they treat me a bit as a child. That's true. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the government tells you you have to wash your hands, you know. And, uh, yeah. And uh, that's uh, it's quite uh, a serious uh, a, a, a measure. And, uh, and we do question what are liberties, you know, what are the ones that, you know, we have mankind has fought for centuries and what are the histories of freedoms that are endangered and um, maybe we took also some for granted and we shouldn't but you know that it is a participatory a project as you say we have to ask this question and engage and also fight as you said before you know fight for for um, for what we what we need and um, and theater I think always has been you know on the side uh, you know of, of fighting for the for the in that complex history of freedoms, but to fight for freedoms and for the liberties in all ways and for everyone and not just the liberty of one or a certain class. So it's certainly, I think, a moment where we reevaluate this and, um, and your work in Salah Beckett and in Barcelona, but also your life, you know, of course, is, um, is all part of it. And what we do does matter in our lives, but also in, in, in our works, you know, we're coming closer to the to the end. I really thank you for this yeah. very open, honest uh, uh, talk that also reflects the complex complexities of that moment um, we are in. I'm sure you also speak with young artists and um, 
emerging artists or, or people in general? What, what do you use? What, what advice do you have? I know you said something, but what advice? Uh, being an artist never was easy. So don't hesitate and keep on with your art, despite Corona, despite the economic crisis, despite everything. Find your inspiration in the context. Connect with your soul and try to connect other souls with your artwork. Always be honest with yourself. The work to seek approval from the others. Work to fulfill yourself. Know it, knowing that the harder you try to be like it, the less you will achieve. But keep on always. Art is not a business. It's a way to communicate. It's a dialogue with humanity and with society. So choose what you want to communicate with your art and what you want to amplify with your work. Be a magnifying glass, an uncomfortable one, please. Thank you. That's very, very beautiful. When you think what you want to do with your art and be a magnifying glass, but also an uncomfortable one. So, um, but go on, go on and, uh, and, and engage with art. So this is a very, very, very beautiful. So thank you for that, um, you know, um, moment you, you shared with us in, um, in uh, Barcelona, in your, in your neighborhood. I mean, it's different experience for everyone. If we would call someone yeah. in Madrid or in Malaga, it would be different a week, two weeks earlier or later. But these are, these are real moments. So really, um, um, thank you. And um, I think this is significant for us to hear. Um, what you go through and uh, how it relates to our lives and uh, what lessons uh, we, we, we can learn from this. So really sharing your um, experiences of significance and it adds the kaleidoscope, that incredible kaleidoscope we are experiencing here with our Siegel Talks, but also I think the world is experiencing that, you know, everything does matter in far away places and very, very close ones and the microcosm we now observe at our homes and we will go on this week and uh, we hear um, uh, more voices, significant ones. The, the great director Anne Bogart uh, from, uh, from New York is here with us with her CT company. She has really made major contribution to theater over decades. So a teacher and director. Um, and, uh, and so we will hear uh, from here. Patricia Cornelius from Australia uh, will, will talk about also a playwright, uh, a woman who early on connected to, to us, the society, the classes, the voices of, um, of, of the people and to, to detect them and you know, to, to anticipate and to mirror our um, uh, um, moments in shifting moments between people, relations and, and objects, I guess also on stage. So, and, uh, and Hoi Fai Wu from Hong Kong uh, will join us where um, it is perhaps at the moment also even more a uh, burning question, what will happen after confinement? You know, how will the political fight also be for artists? And uh, wh what is the role of an artist in a time where it now seems that perhaps the history of uh, Hong Kong, the promised 50 years of freedom have been cut short or will be dramatically cut short. Um, or perhaps he will talk about his art only. We don't know. It's an open space, they're open conversations. And really thank you, uh, 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 Aina, for, for being with us and for sharing so openly and uh, for our listeners to be with us um, after all these um, these weeks and uh, as, as so much to do as Aina says she works 10 14 hours a day and we all experience how fast the time goes talks are longer that is true actually what you said we just do business as usual which perhaps already is part of the change we are experiencing so we are forced um, um, to do um, to do less. So thank you for listening, and uh, thanks to HowlRound for being our host out of Emerson College, uh, Travis and uh, uh, Thea, and the great VJ and uh, my team, uh, and Andy and Sun Yang. So really, thank you for listening, and uh, tune back and stay safe and stay tuned. And uh, Aina, hopefully we see you uh, in New York. You said yeah. you're in contact with the play company, the great <laughs> Kate Lerval, one of the few companies that really. <laughs> Early on, you really looked at international work. We don't have enough. It's a tunnel vision. It's a big island, but after all, often it is still an island. So we need to hear your voices. So that will be great. And maybe one day you 
we will see your work here and we have yeah answers. i so hope <laughs> yeah so, so again thank you all and thank you frank uh, thank you and bye bye thank you